In this video, we're going to look at how to set up SI Pro for a signal integrity simulation. We'll then use the electromagnetic, or EM, data from that simulation to run a channel simulation in the ADS schematic view. For this video, we'll be using a slightly modified version of the open source Panda board, which can be found in the video description below. The goal of this EM simulation is to characterize a set of traces on the board. In this case, it is a MIPI D5 bus between the camera and the processor. The result of the simulation is a set of S parameters that captures the frequency response of these traces, including reflection, transmission, and crosstalk. The S parameter model is needed for use in our channel simulation, with realistic models for the transmitters and receivers. Let's begin by creating a new analysis. Right-click on Analyses and select New Powerware SI Analysis, then right-click to rename. The nets are color-coded. Black is ground, red is power nets, yellow is signal traces, and blue is unspecified. You can adjust the rules in the options so that your nets are always correctly assigned. In the project menu, filter the nets by the term CSI. If some of the nets aren't correctly identified, you can change them. We'll select all of the data lines, right-click, and select Set as Signal. We'll now drag and drop the signal lines to the nets in our analysis. If I have lots of nets to drag, or lots of analyses, it may also be easier to just right-click and select Add to Analysis. We also need a ground net as well. We'll clear the nets filter and then drag digital ground to our nets to analyze as well. As you can see, our analysis is giving us a warning. This is because we haven't defined the ports for our nets. We can easily set up the ports by selecting our signals, right-click, and selecting Create Ports or Component Model Groups. Because this tool is designed for SI applications, it is intelligent enough to detect nets that start at a connector and end at a device. If there is a component in series, the action will automatically change to connect a component. This doesn't mean that the component will now be embedded in the sParameter result. All components entered in this fashion will be external to the sparam file, so we can change or tune the component value later on without needing to re-simulate. In our case, we'll just create ports at each end with digital ground as the ground reference. We have now done all that we need in order to start our simulation, but we should always inspect the structure to make sure we've found the best ground references for our ports. As a rule of thumb, make sure that the ground references are as near as possible to the plus port. If you find that there is a better place for the minus pin, you can add a pin in the ADS layout view on a ground layer. We also want to double check that the ground plane we've selected is in fact the closest one to our signals. You may find that there is a change in reference planes, and that the closest plane to your signals is actually a power plane. If that is the case, your simulation accuracy will be improved by including the true return path for your signal currents. This means adding in the power plane to your nets to simulate and the decoupling capacitors, which are providing a high frequency path between the ground and power. It's important to verify that your settings are correct before simulating, because these simulations can take minutes to hours, especially since we are simulating the entire board instead of a cookie cut. Let's click on options to make sure that we have what we want. We'll change the frequency plan to be automatic from 0 Hz to 2 GHz. And we'll set the maximum number of points to sample at 40. An automatic plan means that it will use an adaptive frequency sampling on higher frequencies, but a logarithmic plan on lower frequencies. There are other advanced options, but we won't go into detail about them for this video. Default options are recommended. We are now ready to run our SI simulation. Press Run to simulate. Once completed, you can find the S parameter data under the Results dropdown. Select all of the ports and right-click to add the transmission plots. While this data is good to look at, these signals are actually differential, so for a more accurate result, we can add mixed-mode pairs. 
Change to the Mixed Mode tab. We can make differential pairs by selecting two of the nets, right-click, and select Make Differential Pairs. Now we can plot the transmission of the differential pair. SI Pro is generally smart enough to determine which port is matched to which port. In our case, however, we need to add a differential pair recognition rule. Go to Tools, Options, then the Nets tab. In advance, I've added a rule where the plus net name is DX and the minus net name is DY to match our port names. Now I'll select all, right click, and make differential pairs. The recognition rule will automatically assign the pairs. Now I'll select all and plot the return loss. If you've added a lot of plots and want to work out which is which, you can add a marker and open up its properties. Here it clearly tells us that this is a differential to differential connection and gives us the port and net names to make sense of what we're plotting. The EM data is the starting point for detecting problems in your board designs. We can plot near-end and far-end crosstalk and even TDR and TDT of these traces in order to investigate issues. When we're happy with our EM data, we can move this simulation back to the schematic view to run further channel simulations. Click on Generate Subcircuit to create a schematic component that uses the EM data that we just simulated. A new component with 10 input and 10 output ports is generated, labeled with the same port names as the analysis. However, the pins are not automatically sorted in an order that would be easy to use in a channel sim. In hindsight, this order could have been changed in SI Pro. Instead of the auto-generated subcircuit, we'll use an SMP block with the data from the EM simulation. Drop the SMP block, then select the data from our simulation. Go to Check View as Parameters. Then navigate to Edit Change Port Order. We can now adjust the ports to the desired order, which for us will be DX and DY in order, starting with input and ending with output. Once you're done adjusting the pins, save as a new file. We also need to change the orientation of the pin order to match the pin order with what we just set it to be. Finally, I'll hook up this SMP block to the rest of the channel simulation. As you can see, I've placed a TX to RX on the second channel. In addition, I've added random phase crosstalk for each of the other input ports and a differential termination for each of the output ports. I'll run a channel simulation on this over 1E4 bits. Here's the eye diagram from the probe at the receiver. Some of the additional noise in the density plot is crosstalk from the adjacent signals. Since these are differential pairs, the crosstalk impact is low. The distinct levels that we see in the top of the density plot are due to the reflections in the channel. In other words, impedance mismatches are causing inner symbol interference. Thank you for watching this Keysight ESOF EDA tutorial. You can find a link to a free trial of ADS in the video description below.